Now let me walk you through how to set up one of these click events. And we'll use this simple example where we have a pie chart that I want to click on a slice of this pie chart in order to um, limit the data that's shown in the bar graph that you see here, where the bar graph itself is coming from this pivot command. Now, the way that these click events work is that what we're actually changing when we do the click is that we're changing the value of a global variable. And then those variables can be used in subsequent commands. Uh, for example, in this case, we're going to set up a global text variable. I can create the variable now. We'll go ahead and call it is group. And the value of this text variable is going to be used um, subsequently in a mask that will limit the data that's shown in my graphic. First, to create the click functionality, I'm going to open up my pie chart. And notice that you'll see this little graphic here with a kind of a star um, look to it. When you click on this, you'll see a hover menu. All of the commands that now have these click events associated with them have uh, this hover menu that will pop up. Um, some of them are slightly different as to the different things that you can change given the type of command you're using. But in this case, what we want to do is overwrite the value of this variable is group with the name of whatever slice of the pie I click on. And that's it. That's all I need to do. The click event is now set up when I click on this uh, slice A, then notice how this variable is updated to the value of A. If I click B, it's going to change. So the, the event itself is occurring where I'm changing the value of the variable, but this variable isn't used anywhere. Um, as I said, I'm going to use this in a mask. So let's go ahead and set that up. I can open up my pivot command and you'll see the section use as mask. I'm going to select this group um, column. That's again what's being drawn here, the group A, B, or C. So if I make the mask to um, limit the group that's being shown, you would use the um, select the entry text is to then be able to select the global variable that we've created is group. Now the data that you see in my bar chart is limited to the group that I've selected from my global variable. And if I go ahead and click on other sections of the pie, then you go ahead and have that connection between them. So to review this, what I'm doing is I'm clicking on my pie chart. That's updating the value of this text variable, which is then being used in the mask of this pivot command. And I can create all sorts of connections here. I can have multiple click events, and I can have multiple commands that are utilizing those click events. Also, if I wanted to turn off the click event, I can go back into my pie chart, and notice how the click event itself has a little um, dot in the center of it that's indicating that I have an event active for this command. If I click that and I uncheck the, the overwrite checkbox, it will temporarily take away the click event. Now if I go back to my pie chart, it is now draggable again because I it no longer has the click ability and I can add it back again very quickly by checking that box again. I'm going to uh, go ahead now and uh, if you're interested in more details on how these click events were created in this first graph or series of graphs that I showed you, I'm going to walk through this file in a little bit more detail in a final video and hopefully then you'll be able to possibly start creating some of these for yourself.